Guys, I have a feeling this is the type of match we'll go back and look at three or four times over the course of next week. The King of Kings, Triple H, is looking as imposing tonight than at any point during his dominant 20-year reign. You know, normally I'd accuse you of kissing up to the boss, Byron, but that assessment's actually pretty spot on. Well, thanks. Great job escaping, trying to turn this thing around. Nice. Shut it down. There's almost no rebounding from a strike like that. We're used to seeing Triple H make history in the ring as a competitor, but what we witnessed in August of 2016 was something totally different. The game appeared out of nowhere during the fatal four-way match to crown a new Universal Champion. In one swift move, Triple H's pedigree on Seth Rollins shifted the balance of power. The night Triple H dropped Seth Rollins with the pedigree, thus handing the WWE Universal Championship to Kevin Owens on a silver platter, will go down as one of the most shocking events in WWE history. No one could believe when Triple H appeared on Monday Night Raw in the first place, let alone sending Seth Rollins crashing to the canvas thanks to the pedigree. That one move changed the entire landscape of sports entertainment. about devastation. It's a good right on the mark. Tag made up top. He's in trouble. I'm not sure how much he has left. That wasn't even close to three. He is not going to go down without a fight, Michael. Six-man tag team matches have been a staple of competition since the early days of sports entertainment. Two teams of three compete against one another under traditional tag team rules. Stipulations can be added like no disqualification, two out of three falls, elimination, falls count anywhere, or whatever else someone could think of. Matches can also be held in a caged environment. Seth Rollins has him right where he wants him. I don't think he should get up. Six-man tags can be fought under so many different types of stipulations. Teams can be part of a faction. The three superstars of the line because of a common interest. The most crucial aspect to a six-man tag team being successful is that trio's ability to act as one cohesive unit. Three individuals working collectively at all times. So much can take place during a six-man tag match, regardless of what... And he tags his partner in. Momentum has certainly shifted here, Michael. On the mark. There are instances when a six-man tag match will feature a team where superstars have not always seen eye to eye or are in the midst of a disagreement. When that's the case, someone on the team must step up and be the voice of reason so the trio can function as a cohesive unit.
Batista is in position. Corey, earlier you talked about what needs to happen when members of a six-man team have differences or had differences in the past. If the team can't find a way to get on the same page, they will not last very long. Someone on the team has to step up and make sure for at least that match, everyone on the team can work together. That's easier said than done. Just because superstars might be favorites of the WWE Universe or have a common enemy, that doesn't mean they'll get along. It also doesn't mean that any past issues will magically go away. In this business, people have long memories, so if someone sees an issue on their team, they need to resolve it right away. When a superstar is in a six-man match, one of the most important things to remember is knowing when to tag out and get the fresh member of your team in the ring. We've talked about continuity many times on this program, but it's more than that. You don't want to try to do too much when you have other members of your team out there. about when a superstar is in six-man action and how crucial it is that they have the presence of mind to realize when they need to tag out. Not everyone who competes as part of a six-man team has the ability to do that. We've seen many times over the years that a superstar's inability to do that has cost their team the match. We've also seen over the years that not all superstars play well with others. Some competitors are so dedicated to singles careers that when they are put in a six-man team, they become a bit lost. That's when a mistake could be made, and it could be very costly. Bad spot for him to be in here, guys. He's got to do something to get back in this thing. In 2016, the new... But he's got to capitalize now! And here comes Batista. He wants no part of the outside. And he kicks out. Just needs to do more damage. Corey, we've talked about six... First. Oh, it's over. And the kick out. Gonna take more than that. Something that is always important in a six man match is having the ability to perform double team moves. One of the things that successful six-man teams try and execute are double-team moves and then have the third team member perform a signature or... Oh, and he makes the tag. That was a game-changer right there, Michael. <laughs> Looks like Randy Orton has broken a sweat. He needs to create some space and find a way to get back on the offensive. Teamwork is always paramount in a six-man tag match. Superstars want to be able to have a level of teamwork where two members of the trio perform a double-team move, and the third member follows that up with a move so their opponent is really down for the count. The key is to deliver the maximum amount of punishment to your opponent in the least amount of time. You have until the referee's count of five. It's not like you have all day in the ring, but if your team of three can deliver that type of offense, your trio will be in good shape. He may very well have reached the point of no return here in this six-man tag team match. Early cover. Pins broken up. But what incredible power. Wow, what a vertical 
Triple suplex. What a stop. Good grief. He isn't showing much life here, guys. This is his opportunity to win this thing. One, two, our oh, kick out. How in the world? Randy Orton might be the most successful third generation wrestler in WWE history. The Orton family has been a fixture in wrestling for over 50 years, competing in main events from the 1960s all the way to today. Yeah, Cole, it all started with Randy Orton's grandfather, Bob Orton Sr., who competed in the NWA and AWA, even took on Bruno San Martino in New York City. Wow, I thought he was a goner. Ain't no stopping him now. You both started the Orton family tree with the discussion of Bob Orton Sr., but Randy's father, Cowboy Bob Orton, has an impressive pedigree, too, as a WWE superstar, including being in Roddy Piper's corner during major matches at the first two WrestleManias. Yeah, it's great as and Ambrose is rolling now, Michael. Looking louder, face first. The Viper getting absolutely pounded. And he breaks the pin. Oh, Roman Reigns wants some air here. Showing off some of his speed there. He's fighting from underneath. Uh-oh, Cole, I think we know what the Viper's doing. Yeah, Randy Orton was in position. That might have done it, Cole. He's fighting from underneath. Dean Ambrose kicks out easily there. Not even close. That's what he was looking for, Michael. Man, Seth Rollins is just relentless. Interesting decision here, Corey. I don't know. I kind of like it. He clearly wants... He stops the count. I don't think he can take any more. Triple H showing a lot of heart here. But how can he turn this around in his favor? Rather than continuing to absorb any more punishment, he might want to tag out here. To be successful, the offensive style he's relying on tonight requires he not lose too much stamina. But by the looks of things right now, he might need a new game plan. Over time, there have been various types of six-man teams that have been successful. There are family trios like the Guerreros, the Grams, the Andersons, and the Von Erichs. There have been members of factions who have also produced tremendous six-man teams like the Fabulous Freebirds, the Four Horsemen, the NWO, and D-Generation X. What a right to the face! You got your teeth in the front row. And Roman Reigns knows how to play mind games as good as anybody. Byron, you mentioned some families and groups that created incredible six-man... One! Wow! Pure brute strength on the part of Roman Reigns. Not yet. Too early. Oh, no. Reigns. But I don't know how much gas he has left, guys. Oh, my. One. That was an easy kick out for Roman. Oh, wow. Tagged in. There are times during a six-man tag match where the hostility between two teams overflows. 
The result is complete chaos at all six suits. What's Roman Reigns putting together here? Yeah, but it's all up. Shoulders down. An easy kick out there. You have to put in a little more work than that. He's got him on his heels and shows no signs of letting up. Oh, Roman. Superman punch. Good night. Just when you thought he had nothing left. Damage is taking a toll. Byron, you talked about the moment in six-man tag matches when all semblance of order. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. Coming. He's fighting from underneath. He's talking his opponent from the top turnbuckle. Incredible oh, right to the body. That hurt. But he's running on fumes here. Does he have enough left in him to capitalize? Seth Rollins is rolling now. They call Seth Rollins the architect for a reason. Yeah, right to the back of the neck. Seth freaking Rollins. Unbelievable. Isn't showing much life here, guys. When Rollins fans have plenty to worry about here. Now, Triple H needs to capitalize on this opportunity. He's calling for it. He's fighting from underneath. With the tag is Randy Orton. Success breeds success, and he's definitely having some right now. He's fighting from underneath. For a few years, Randy Orton brought his career to even greater heights by aligning with the authority as their personally appointed face of the WWE. Seth Rollins got on a dangerous path there. Great move by the architect. Randy Orton, no problem at getting out of that one. There's a big reversal by Seth Rollins. He's fighting back here. I expected nothing less, Cole. Seth Rollins got out of there in the nick of time. They okay, should count his lucky stars. Well, the architect is rolling now. Michael mentioned Randy Orton as... For a schoolboy. Uh-oh. What a super kick! This one is over. X marks the spot on that one. Escapes trouble there. Gotta shake the cobwebs. Looking for the finish. I don't know how I feel about Seth Rollins lately, guys. Seth, great job escaping, trying to turn this thing around. Somebody wound him up, and he's off and running. His partner wants back in. Yeah, but what you want and what you get are often two very different things. And here we go. Seth Rollins sees his opening. What a comeback. Randy Orton got the worst end of that stick. He's fighting from underneath. One. And he stops the count. Wait a minute. There goes the ref. Man down. Corey, I would have to disagree with Whoa. the game getting absolutely punished right now. He's fighting from underneath. Get this guy some smelling salts. Roman Reigns gets the tag. He's fighting from underneath. Thanks to Raw General Manager Kurt Angle in May of 2017, the WWE Universe saw a dream team come together when the Hardy Boys joined forces with the lunatic fringe Dean Ambrose. The exciting trio, the fight for getting absolutely pounded right now. Randy Orton got the worst end of that stick.
Byron, we always make a point to talk about continuity amongst team members. In the six-man match, where Dean Ambrose teamed with the Hardys against Sheamus Cesaro and the Miz, both teams worked very well together. That surprised me, since this was the first time they teamed together. But there was something that night about the lunacy of Dean Ambrose fitting perfectly with the Daredevil Hardy Boys. I've got to say, I had goosebumps for a week after the Hardy Boys returned to WWE at 2017's WrestleMania. During that six-man on Raw, Team Extreme formed an effective trio with that lunatic Dean Ambrose. After a twist of fate from Matt Hardy, Jeff crushed The Miz with a swanton bomb, and that was all she wrote. Over time, there have been various types of six-man teams that have been successful. There are family trios like the Guerreros, the Grams, the Andersons, and the Von Erichs. There have been members of factions who have also produced tremendous six-man teams like the Fabulous Freebirds, the Four Horsemen, the NWO, and D-Generation X. Byron, you mentioned some families and groups that created incredible six-man teams. Talking more about factions, don't forget about the likes of the Hart Foundation, Evolution, the Wyatt Family, the Shield, and the New Day. These are only some of the trios who had unbelievable matches against a variety of adversaries. If we're talking about three-man teams, I need to shout out one of the Hearts Impact. It should be game over here, guys. When a superstar is in a six-man match, one of the most important things to remember is knowing when to tag out and get the fresh member of your team in the ring. We talk about continuity many times on this program, but it's more than that. You don't want to try to do too much when you have other members of your team out there. Corey, you spoke about when a superstar is in six-man action and how crucial it is that they have the presence of mind to realize when they need to tag out. Not everyone who competes as part of a six-man team has the ability to do that. We've seen many times over the years that a superstar's inability to do that has cost their team the match. We've also seen over the years that not all superstars play well with others. Some competitors are so dedicated to singles careers that when they are put in a six-man team, they become a bit lost. That's when a mistake could be made, and it could be very costly. I don't think he can take any more. Triple H is on fire, letting everyone know how he feels. He's looking a little wobbly here, guys. Michael, his legs look like they're about to give out on him. Triple H doing a great job of turning that around. Oh, he turns it around. A second time. Can he finish him off here? Oh, no. Seth Rollins needs to worry now. Yeah, the clock's ticking on the Kingslayer. Really struggling now. Everyone knows that Triple H's career is one of the most accomplished. Uh-oh, we know what's coming next. We're about to see them. Rollins fans have plenty to worry about here. Starting to struggle. And he stops the count. Lucky him. Byron mentioned still being bitter about Triple H bouncing him around a while back. Well. Join the club of attack announcers. He gave me a wedgie back when he started DX with Shawn Michaels. My advice, Byron, just get over it. I'm sensing a trend here, fellas. Triple H has transformed from a dominant superstar to one of the sharpest businessmen the company has ever seen. Also, he gave me a contract instead of a beating, so I know he's smart. Seth Rollins is feeling it right now. Hook and ladder face first. That has got to be it. The pitfalls of gravity, Michael. And it's Dean Ambrose making a move. Dean Ambrose. Wow, I'm just as surprised as you guys are. There may be no coming back from that slam, Cole. Damage is taking a toll. Get this guy some smelling. What a stop to the back of the neck. 
To think, I almost wrote him off earlier. Will Triple H even be able to continue? How could you question the game? Picking up on your previous statement, Byron. Reigns sizing up the target. Spear! Cut him in half. Here's his moment, Michael. Now Roman Reigns needs to capitalize on this opportunity. What a six-man tag match. That was just one of those matches that the men involved should just be proud to be a part of. A legendary performance. Here are your winners, Roman Reigns. That's a victory for the team, especially Roman Reigns, who really helped put this one away. You can bet there's going to be a celebration tonight. And I can imagine there aren't too many people at home regretting tuning in for that amazing.